What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Energy Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, there's a lot of news coming out. Nova, Brian, this has been a project that we've been talking about for quite some time, and people have been hoping to see, because there's some scenes there that we everybody was is hoping to see. And this is supposed to be a film that they're working on, correct? Yeah, so Brad Winderbaum, who's the, the head of the, the TV side of it, mentioned that this project is early stages, but is something that is in the works, sort of in the machine somewhere that they will hope, are hoping they can get done. So there's, this is really uh, um, really early stages, correct? Yeah, because there's been a, always that, that, that drumbeat casting rumor of Ryan Gosling as Nova that never it's never been confirmed. Winderbaum's comments make me think they're not that close to that stage even yet but just that there's agreement in the house as he said quote there are plans to develop nova and but then he says quote i hope it gets to the screen we had heard it was going to be a film he make he does call it a show he says quote i would like to see a nova show one day so i that maybe there's a tbd there as to what format this project ultimately takes it's really too early to tell what sort of level of excitement uh because there are there is excitement for this people have been wanting to see this but too early to really get excited because there's really nothing to see right there's, there's really nothing to sort of uh wrap our heads around because of all the shenanigans that's been going on with marvel and and their their ip the fact that don Cheadle won a NAACP award for freaking secret agent Asian brian is 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 I don't know what to tell you, Brian. Well, shout out to Don. He's 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 yeah, one, yeah, he's yeah. one of our better actors. That was not yes, one yes, of yes, the, yes, that yes. was not one of the better efforts for anyone <laughs> anyone involved. Uh, this, the less we say about Secret Invasion, the, the better. My yeah. question with Nova, um, and I don't know what your thoughts are on this, is that obviously James Gunn introduced us to the Nova Corps in the Guardians franchise. He gave he gave that a look. He, you know, he gave that an yeah, aesthetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would they? Would this be connected in any way to that, or, or would they be free to kind of reinvent the look or change the sort of the the feel? Because it was it was obviously like a little bit more of a comedic element, right? With like Glenn Close and John C. Riley, like the way they were playing it in that movie was not necessarily straight laced and serious. I would not try to play in that playground that James Gunn was in and go different. Okay, I agree. Keep the aesthetic. Keep okay, the so you like the look. The You're look. okay with yeah, the look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good with the look, but go a different route because, again, uh-huh. your planet's been destroyed. <laughs> there shouldn't be a lot of humorous situations right. going exactly. on, right? Yes, fair. So, yeah. What's the next, Brian? Let's do Eternals 2. So, I haven't heard anything about Eternals 2, but go ahead. So there were two, there were two, two stories about Eternals 2. Uh, the first was that it was on the list of projects Bob Iger was referring to that he said had been quietly killed, which would make sense. This was not a successful film critically or commercially. <laughs> but then came word that Eternals 2 was not 100% dead in the sense that the there would not be another Eternals movie, but the Eternals world and characters were being repurposed into another Marvel project of grand scale. What would that be? The rumor that I saw was that it would be a ways off, obviously, as all these things seem to be. But the idea that there's some comic storylines connecting the Eternals to the X-Men and ultimately the Avengers. And so they might bring them back in some of the culminating films later on in, in those worlds when they get there. That would be the implication. It almost feels like Chewbacca getting the, the medal in Star Wars. <laughs> too little, too late. Because that was what I originally thought that you were going to do with the first Eternals. I thought you were going to make that connection then. (laughs) Now you want to do it? You blew it! You blew it! Word, yo! That's the problem, right? Like, when you... The thing is, if you go... Let's say we don't see these characters for seven, eight, nine years, and they all of a sudden pop up. There's no impact. Yeah. There's no impact there. Like for know. characters to go that long and pop up, like if RDJ pops up as Tony Stark ten years from now, that still has impact because of yes. the because of what he did to, with the role while he had it. None of the characters in the Eternals have that kind of staying power. Like they don't. So if they randomly show up here and there, 
you're not gonna get crowds being like, oh my God, there's Richard Madden. Like, no, that's not like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You had, I mean, Robert Downey Jr. Life, mo life model decoy. He said it, Brian. <laughs> he said it. That's the only way you bring him back, cause he disappeared. I Tony Stark disappeared. He went into the woods because he wanted to be away from everything. That's great that they want to keep the characters kind of on the back burner, but nothing's happening with those anytime soon. And we're dead. I think it de the one thing we take from this is you will not get Eternals two, and you should not. It doesn't yeah. deserve to have a sequel. What's next? Now we got Blade and Cap 4 updates, um, none of which are great. So Blade, the only update was that Aaron Pierre, who was cast supposedly in one of the lead roles, confirmed on a red carpet recently that in the current iteration of Blade, he's not involved in the project anymore at all. Mm. So there were rumors that he was actually one of, if not the lead villains in the old iteration. But he's now saying he's not even in the movie at all. So completely different film. I, whether that's good or bad, who knows? We know Blade has gone through a lot of versions, but now you have at least one of the confirmed actors saying, that I'm not in it. I'm done. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know what you make of that, if you have any reaction to... I mean, it's just frustrating that at this point, they still do rework in something that, you know, you would think that they, were, they already have it tight. You know what I'm saying? When did this news come out? Uh, last two or last three or four days, maybe. And he was, and he just mentioned that he was gone. And, but so he may have been gone for a while already, right? I think, it, I think the implication was he's known that he was not involved for a while. He's just yeah. making it public that he's, he's not. Yeah. But, you know, if the current iteration is about Blade's daughter and, you know, ha has this sort of female villain, we haven't gotten casting on that either. So how close are they actually to the current iteration? Doesn't sound like that close. Oh, Captain America 4. So we, we talked a little bit about this earlier, but we've gotten some more details um, that the reshoots that are forthcoming on this ah. will 100% erase all signs and mentions of the Serpent Society. We had previously yes, yes, heard yes, they yes, were yes. being reduced. Now we're hearing they are being completely eliminated. And part Isn't of the reason... <laughs> because part and so the reason is this is something we had heard before we got more details test screenings to the initial cut were very poor Pablo man it's alarming I just the reasons now coming out as to why the test screenings did not go well were one poor chemistry between the leads poor romantic chemistry between Anthony Mackie and whoever his love interest is oh, yeah. and people were not happy with the over political messages of the film um, Pablo this film ain't gonna work it, it's not, I'm, I am out on this movie until further notice nothing here sounds good nothing that moment Brian when I see him getting the shield for the first time is a dope moment it sort of faltered a bit in the the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, uh, how they well, the sort of ended. Yeah, oh, the how they ended up. He was okay until the finale. Yeah. But that big speech. Yeah, yeah, that speech yeah, yeah, doesn't yeah, yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. First of all, the, when they first announced the, the, the Serpent Society, it was a joke. Why didn't you just leave it like that? As a joke. Instead, this is what you go back to, Serpent Society, because you can't come up with something else? You can't go to the comic books and find something dope? But What's this, happening? But I mean, this is my point of like, this movie was overstuffed. Why do you have the Serpent Society in the same movie with the Red Hulk, the leader? You're trying to establish a new Falcon and, you know, a new cap really on the big screen. That's a lot, man. Like, why are you trying to do that in one movie? It'd be crazy if the leader, what's his name? Tim Blake Nelson. If he gets cut again. For <laughs> <laughs> Dude, like, as long as the checks keep coming, <laughs> I'm good. You know, we harp on this all the time. And, like, Anthony Mackie is a charismatic guy. Yeah. When I see no chemistry between the leads, that's I don't even need to read anymore. If that's true, reshoots ain't going to fix that. Like, let's talk about when Anthony Mackie debuted in, our, in the greatest Marvel movie ever. Look at the chemistry between the leads. Yeah. Chris Evans, Scarlett Johansson, Chris Evans, Anthony Mackie, Chris Evans, Samuel L. Jackson. He is Falcon. Everybody Falcon, together. On, uh, Frank Grillo. Everybody on screen. Twos, threes, ensemble. Everyone has chemistry. Everyone crackles. This, is, this goes back to the question, Brian. 
do they care about? Is Anthony Mackie caring about what he's doing? Because this is not good. When I see that tagline of like this movie was overly politicized, it makes me wonder, well, is that what you cared about more than making a good, entertaining Captain America? Because part of the beauty of the Chris Evans trilogy and Winter Soldier in particular is genre wise closest to a political thriller, but it isn't overly political. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Shield takes the world as it is, not how we'd like it to be. Like there's, there's a real centrality and debate without feeling like you're being preached to. And yeah. if that was a warning sign coming out of these test screenings, yeah, you could tone that down in the reshoots, but if that was a core thesis of the way they wanted to build this movie, audiences are going to reject it. I'm sorry. Like I I, that, I don't I just don't think that's what audiences want to see from their Captain America movie. Yeah. So that makes me think, you know, we talk about reshoots. That makes me think this is a reshoot reshoot. Like they're yeah, basically yeah, redoing yeah, they're this they're movie. They're redoing this movie. So how I, expensive I mean, is this going to be? That's the thing. Like, this already feels like a lost cause. It's tough yeah, to get it's excited. Trying, but it, it's it, tough it, to it, get it. excited. Like, when you when you run down the list of Marvel projects, and granted, you, you know, you're right. We still get a lot of news and a lot of rumors. But if you just look at the projects, you're like, what am I actually really excited <laughs> about on the Marvel ledger? It's yeah, not a lot. the Marvel lot. ledger. I can't even think of that. Oh, wait, I think they just renamed the Agatha series for the eighth time. Although, Brian, I'm really, I'm sort of looking forward to seeing how that turns out because it's interesting that she, you know, how she really snaps out of it. I'm interested to see how, how that happens. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, was that all? No more? Yeah, Ooh. that's kind of our Marvel Roundup. Like I said, it always feels like kind of depressing these days when we do the Marvel Roundup. That's the state of affairs. Yeah, man. Oh, oh, actually, wait. Well, I guess there is one more item, which is the Bo de Mayo. I don't know. We can't really say much, but Bo de Mayo, who is the writer and creator of X-Men 97, which is dropping this week, was fired. Uh, he was fired and removed from the project and all promotion. Um, he was deleted. He, yes. So all I can, you know, it's pure speculation. We have no details. Um, yeah. You can whatever it is. Mills, if you want. Yeah. It's to Bad. me, it's. What I would say is it's highly unlikely to be related to the content of the show itself yeah. and much more likely to be related to something around him personally, conduct wise, that type of thing, which is, again, unconfirmed. But yeah. the, the nat we've seen people leave projects. This has the earmarks of it's not about the show. It's about something else. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. timing yeah. is bad. Anyway, what, what are the odds? Since we know he loves the needle drop, what are the odds Kevin's cell phone right now is? Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> he probably has it, yo. He probably has it, yo. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the Marvel news. Which one bothers you the most? <laughs> Exactly. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes on! Yeah!